Okay, so now it's time to get into final assembly. Um, we've got our sled in there and it's powered. Uh, we've gotten our, uh, our little uh, service hatch here uh, with a door on it that we can get into. Now you'll notice that my crow box is still um, just a rotor up top here. So um, I'm going to need these parts, my sliding lid and the uh, rail upper for that lid. And uh, I'll go ahead and open my... Okay, so I've moved ahead just a little bit off camera and uh, you'll want to catch up to where I am here. Um, inside I have my uh, sled full of electronics um, and I have set this crow box for training phase two. Um, right now, that's because we're going to need to test, test um, our perch uh, switches. So you want to make sure you're configured for training phase two. Also, my sliding lid has been installed, so that's in there now. We're going to go ahead and put the lid on, the lid to the machine. And again, that's with this strip here, this fulcrum, to the rear. And uh, you just want to let the ears, these little humps from the uh, rails, come through there. And then gently make sure that your uh, limit switches make it into these two square holes at the front, here and here, and that these four tabs lock the lid down. Um, you could uh, glue, uh, hot glue the lid down, but um, I find that it's not necessary often to get inside the crow box to get below this lid, but sometimes you will have a problem with, with uh, loading coins into the magazine that, you'll, that you may have to um, remove the lid to remedy, so I find that it's best to... Um, to uh, leave this just uh, force fit, just a friction fit with the tabs and, and not bother with the glue. We'll also need our silicone uh, chef's band to tension the uh, perch and uh, a couple of house-made weights. Um, now these are each one ounce um, and it's a convenient feature of the US quarter that it weighs one-fifth of an ounce. So each of these packets of five uh, quarters weighs one ounce, so two of them together weighs two ounces, and that's what I'm going to use for my weight. Um, obviously crows weigh quite a bit more than two ounces, but um, my crow box, uh, the crow boxes that I run, I should say, are most often visited by smaller birds like jays, Stellar's jays, um, so I like to keep about a two ounce activation weight. Um, yeah, you'll have to configure for a heavier weight if you're uh, uh, if you're pretty sure you're going to be serving actual crows. Um, and uh, I don't know the weight of a crow offhand, so um, you'd have to look that up and come up with a, a similar weight. Now, um, we're going to talk about putting uh, the perch on, and I know for a fact that this perch right now, with no tension, is going to be heavy enough to trip these limit switches. So when I put this perch on and let go of it, it's probably going to trigger my, my sliding lid to open. And it has. So in this case, my lid, or my perch rather, is a little too heavy. Um, it's, it itself is heavy enough to depress the limit switches. So what I'm going to do is take my little silicone band, and this is a brand new one, so I'm going to stretch it out a bit just to get started here, just to make sure that um, I have the right tension. And uh, the way I like to install this into these um, little ridges here at the back of the uh, perch hook is to just stretch the rubber band and, and let it fall down into those uh, slots and then I'm going to try the second the second um, notch down on my perch return hook back here uh, and I'm going to have to wait for this to close before I can tell whether I've uh, put enough return force on that perch to keep those switches from depressing on their own Okay, so the crow box hasn't ripped open again, it hasn't, the, the sliding lid hasn't flown open, so I know that um, this perch is not depressing the limit switches right now. So I'm going to try to add my two ounces of weight, and now it does open. Um, so I'll remove those now, and the next thing to make sure of is that the uh, tension of this rubber band is sufficient to lift the lid up high enough to let go of the switches once the bird leaves. Uh, and to test that, I'm going to have to wait until the sliding lid finishes closing here. And uh, if it remains closed, then I'll know that uh, I'm at the right level of tension. Which it looks like I am. So if this were to open again immediately, uh, it would mean the crow box thinks a bird is still present, which means that this rubber band hasn't done its job of lifting the perch off of those two switches. 
Um, so this is something that you'll have to, you know, tune at your bench until it gets, uh, till you get the correct uh, response for the type of weight of bird you're expecting. Um, the perch tensioner back here, this little sort of comb-shaped thing, has three slots in it. So if you need more return force, um, one of your options is to take this band out of this first set of slots and move it to this rear set of slots here on the actual perch hook. Or you could unhook the band from the tensioner back here and move it down uh, one notch um, for heavier birds. And uh, if you need still more return force, then uh, you could actually put a knot in the rubber band to shorten it, uh, which would generate quite a bit more return force. So I'm going to test this here. Okay, so looks like there's an acceptable range here. Uh, I'm going to leave my rubber band uh, in the first set of notches on this perch return hook. And on this tensioner here on the back of the crow box, I'm going to leave it in the lowest slot. Um, and I think that will have me covered for most of my uh, operation. Let's have one more test with two ounces of weight here. Yep, alright, good. So that's working the way that I'd like it to work. And I think that this crow box is pretty much ready to go into the field.